Hello, and thank you for joining us on Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett, and I am here on the set of Cooking Classic at the Culinary Arts Institute on the campus of Luzerne County Community College. I'm joined by Executive Chef Dave Pembleton. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Dave's going to talk to us today about handling knives, how to use knives. And he's going to make a corn chowder so we can together chop all those vegetables that he needs for that chowder. But before we get to that, I'd like to give Dave an opportunity, if you don't mind, to talk about the Culinary Arts Institute at Luzerne County Community College. Uh, Dave, you're a professor here, correct? Yes. So take us through maybe a little bit about what someone might expect when we say a culinary institute. Well, that's a good question because this program started as a six-month course of study hmm. for people who were coming back from the military and who were unemployed. It was a six-month program at the time, uh -huh. and it was geared primarily to uh, get them ready for work. How about that? I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And then it evolves into an associate's degree program for people who wanted to go into management. Okay. okay. So we started at the main campus, and the first... Uh, 15 years of my career were up there at the main campus um, and it's it's grown into three three different programs one in uh, hotel and restaurant business management one in culinary arts and also one in pastry arts um, we were losing a few students to other schools so uh, we decided to write a pastry arts program since I've been here uh, so now it's more geared towards professionals uh, who are wanting to go out and be chefs and managers of area hotels and restaurants. Uh, and then with the addition of this building here, uh, three years ago I believe, uh, being downtown in Nanakoke, I think it gives us more visibility. Oh, and this is a fabulous building, isn't it? Absolutely. This is incredible. If you haven't seen it already, you should really stop in sometime, make an appointment, and tour this facility because it's magnificent. It's state of the art, and it, it has everything that you would need to get mm -hmm. trained uh, to do those those types of jobs in the food service industry. Oh, it's right. really a great facility. And when you talk about jobs in the food service industry, we're I mean, there are millions of jobs out there that are very different than just working in a restaurant or a hotel too. Can you name some of them? I know that some of your people have come out and they work as corporate chefs. They um, do. They work at testing foods. Right. They work in test kitchens, corporate foods. Some go on to uh, to actually go into the biology of food. Uh, uh -huh. Some are chefs. Uh, I try to talk most of them out of opening up their own restaurant, but you can't. <laughs> and some do and are very successful. Uh, some go into the uh, processing part of, of food. Some work huh. on cruise ships. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the world is, a, is, a, is an open place and there's always, you can always find a job in the hospitality industry. Yeah, huge arena. It really is. Yeah, it is. So thanks, thanks a lot. That was really insightful and I'm glad we really got to talk about that for a change. We don't usually get to do that. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome too. So anyway, here we go. When we return, we're going to get back in the kitchen. We're going to learn about knives. We're going to chop those vegetables and make corn chowder. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a college that's right for you? Luzerne County Community College has more than 100 majors to choose from, convenient class times, and many online courses. Transfer your degree and continue your education at a four-year college. Work with modern equipment found in the professional world, all at the area's lowest tuition. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. Thanks for tuning in. This is Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett, and this is Executive Chef Dave Pendleton. Hello. For those of you who just tuned in, we are on the set of the Culinary Arts Institute on the campus of Luzerne County Community College. And Executive Chef Dave is going to talk to us about knives. We're going to go through the knives, tell you what knife is which and used for what, and sharpen, and everything you need to know about knives. Okay. Ta-da. Okay. Kathy, this is a basic knife set that we use here at the school, mm -hmm. okay? Um, our thing is, if you're gonna uh, go out there in the industry, you need to have good tools, so we uh, suggest that they buy their own. Okay, and these, these are some of the knives that we use here, and this is the, 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 these are the basic knives. Okay. And this one is a serrated knife, and this one we use only for two things, cutting bread 
and okay. cutting tomatoes. And you don't need to sharpen the, this one. This is a, a stay sharp all the time. And if you tried to sharpen it, you would actually wear the points off. So that's one of the knives we we'll use here. Why does serrated work best for bread and tomatoes? Because they stay really sharp on, right on those edges and they, they slide straight through the bread without tearing it. Okay. And it slides straight through a tomato without, without It's funny because it. I bet a lot of people would think that because it's serrated to bring it through bread, it would tear it, but it's just the opposite. Right, and I've seen people try to use these things for other things and it just doesn't work. Right? <laughs> just the opposite. Now this is something you might not see yeah. at your house. This is a, a, a slicing knife and it's made for slicing meats, like mm. roast beef, prime rib, and those types of things. Uh, so it's just the right size to go through a prime rib yeah. and, uh, or through a large piece of beef. Uh, it's not something you see every day in, in, the, in, in your home, but at the, at the, at the institute here, uh -huh. we're teaching people to go out there into the industry. And you notice these are very, very well-made knives. You notice that the steel goes all the way down through the handle. Okay. okay? You notice it's bolstered. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign of a good knife, one that feels good mm -hmm. in your hand. Um, so that's a slicing knife. Not used all that much, but a necessary component. This is the one that we use most often in the, in the food service industry. It's called the chef's knife. And this is used for just about everything in the food service industry. Okay. Cutting through onions, cutting through carrots, you know, your basic uh, mirepoix, you know, all those types of things. Not for opening cans, though. You know, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen some people try to open cans with them, and it just damages your knife. Oh so once gosh. you buy a good set of knives, That's you want to take crazy. care of them. Okay? This okay. is a boning knife, and you see that it has a nice flexible mm -hmm. blade. And this is for boning out fish, getting chicken off the bones, uh, boning out different pieces of beef, those types of things. So anything, uh, anything where mm -hmm. you need to do those types of things, okay? And the last but not least uh, is a paring, paring knife. knife. And this is used for all those little jobs like making little garnitures, mm -hmm. uh, cutting uh, the, the core out of a tomato, uh, cutting small salad things. And Peeling those apples? Things. Peeling apples, if, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I love apples. So <laughs> yes, it's used for all those types of things. Mm -hmm. And for me, these are all the basic knives that you really need. Okay, this is a tri-stone, and what we do is gonna put a little bit of mineral oil on it. You right. can't use regular oil. I have to ask you this though, why do they call it a tri-stone? Because there's three different there's three different grades of the stone that we're going to use. Okay. It starts with a very coarse stone, goes to a medium coarse stone, and then it goes to a ceramic hmm. corner on the other side. Okay. okay. So what we'll do is we're going to take, I'm just going to use this knife because this is the one we're going to use, we're going to use today. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is you want to they say the correct angle is like a 21 degree angle or a 23 degree angle. I don't know. I'm not that smart. So I just start here. We start here about halfway like so. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go up the stone. Okay. Do you have to push like real so. hard or anything? No, I'm not pushing down too hard. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to kind of count how many times I do it there. And I'm going to try to do it the same on the other side. And if you notice, if you, I'm trying to do it the same amount of times on each mm -hmm. on each thing. And how far back do you go? Do you go all I the go way all to the, the way, bottom? All the way to the bottom where the where the cutting edge ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. This knife has a, a piece of steel that comes down that kind of lets you feel that. Okay? okay. So that's what we're looking to do. And then after we're done with with that part of the stone, then we're going to turn it over. So about how many times again do you do that? Well, it depends how much work it needs. If if I've kept my knife pretty good. I mean, it won't take that many times, but I've seen knives that have been abused. Yeah. It might take you 30 or 40 or 50 times to get it, to well, get it right. How often should you do that if well, you're cooking regularly? I tell my students when they start in the kitchen mm -hmm. to do this first. Oh, all right. When they come into the kitchen, start with a start with a very sharp knife. Then the work's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You cut yourself more times with a dull knife than you ever will a sharp okay. knife. Okay. And that's because you're pushing harder and... Right, okay. you know, and there's more of a chance if you have a dull knife for it to kind of bounce off the food mm -hmm. product. And when it cuts you, if you get cut with a dull knife, it kind of bashes your skin in. Mm. And then it's hard to repair it. Where with a sharp knife, it's a very, very e okay. even cut. All and right. I know that's, you're not probably liking that too yeah, much, like, but in our industry, have to talk about that's that. kind of what happens, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we, we cut ourselves. Okay, and this is the very last stone. Okay. okay and can you hand me that towel over there? Sure. And then after you're all done doing this however many times you think you need to go, then we have to wipe it off okay. because you're going to see that there is some oh, yeah. residual uh, okay. from the stone. Okay. So we'll go from there. And then after we do that, Kathy, mm -hmm. this is something that we call a steel in the, in the industry. And this doesn't sharpen the knife, but it keeps a nice 
edge on the knife. Okay. As you're cutting things, little uh, microscopic particles align themselves on the light on the knife, and they make the knife a little dull. Okay. So every once in a while, we do this. Okay. okay? And I tell the students to start out very slow uh -huh. and to keep their fingers behind this guard. Can you see the yeah, marks in the guard? I can. Yeah. You know, you, you understand where I'm coming from. Right. And we're going to do this a few times. And we're going to talk more about sharpening knives and some of the sharpeners you may have at home right after this. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. We are back. This is Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Koslet. This is Executive Chef Dave Pembleton, and he's going to show us how to chop the vegetables that he needs for a corn chowder. Okay. Now, the first thing we're, we've done here is inside this pot, we've just gotten the bacon to render. Okay? okay. I'm using some bacon in this recipe, which is going to add some flavor. Um, pork fat always adds a lot of flavor. So we're just slowly rendering that bacon. And what okay. render means is to get rid of that white fat. It doesn't mean to brown it, just to get rid of that white fat so it okay. releases that fat. And that's the fat that we're going to use to saute our vegetables right. as we're going. And okay. I have to tell you, it smells so good. I bet you wish you were here. Oh, there's nothing like the smell of bacon Isn't and fresh bread. Isn't that true? I love yeah. that on the weekend, out for a run, and you smell everyone cooking breakfast because they well, have time. In, right? <laughs> I do. Yeah, so if you see me next time, just invite me. Okay, so we're going to use our chef knife because mm -hmm. this is the one we use most often. And can, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cut some slices down mm. off the pepper. If you notice, I'm kind of curling my fingers back. I did notice that. Okay, I'm curling my fingers back because I don't want to cut them. Mm. And, and the thing is, is what I try to teach the students, if you cut yourself and you're rolling your fingers back, uh, all you're going to do is, is nick your fingernail. Okay? okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really uh, cut into your flesh. Okay? So that is really neat. It is. Opposite of what I do at home, you know, cut it in half, clean it up, blah, blah, blah. This is great. Right. And, and that's something, you know, mm -hmm. we don't throw that away because we can still use that for salad preparations or whatever. We'll clean that up a little bit later. Okay. And then what I do is I just cut little, I'm just cutting little, okay. like, uh, sticks of the vegetable. Uh -huh. Okay. And I, I try to do all like things first. And this would be like a julienne cut mm -hmm. if you're doing it at home. You know, in, in the Culinary Institute, we actually measure them very precisely. Okay. Uh, but at home, uh, I don't think you're measuring them. But the, the key is to cut them uniform. And by cutting them uniform, they'll cook more evenly and they look a little nicer. Okay? And as I'm going through this, I'm uh -huh. moving my fingers back a little bit. Okay? Uh -huh. Like so. And I'm taking only as much as I think I could handle at a time. Okay. Like so. And then what we do, now we're looking in here. Okay? The bacon's oh, rendering that, nicely, yeah, okay? Is, and you're starting, really nice. you're starting to uh, starting to stick to the pot a little bit, okay? And I really, really like these, with, I guess what they call a Dutch oven a here, Dutch oven. okay? And this is a very useful tool, too. This is called a bench scraper. Mm -hmm. It's actually a baking tool. But what I do is I use it to get stuff from point A... I thought so. ...to point B. I thought you had some hidden surprise, right. you know? And see, something going on See how here. that works, okay? Yeah, that's terrific. Good and idea. That works, that works pretty well. What we're doing now... Uh, uh, Kathy is we're actually sweating the vegetables okay? okay and what sweating means it means to cook in a little bit of fat without adding too much without adding mm -hmm. any color okay and the reason we don't want to add color we're making a chicken corn chowder and which is more of a white complected soup and if we if we made that mm -hmm. had a lot of color there what would happen it would turn it a tan color instead of a white color so celery again I'm doing the same thing I'm cutting mm -hmm. these things into long sticks. Now I'm going to line these up again, yep. and I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the knife on the board. And it seems like the pressure is to the back. Right. So it's a rocking motion okay. from here down. Now, as you get better with a knife, mm -hmm. a lot of times I don't keep the, the point of the of the knife on the board uh, because I can go faster. Okay, show off a little. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this celery. There we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to put it in there, like so. And it just keeps looking better and, and smelling it better really by good. the moment. As it, it does. As it goes on there, mm -hmm. it gets more colorful looking. And what happens here when we sweat the vegetables is we're releasing flavors mm -hmm. and we're actually brightening the colors. Okay. 
So, and this is a very, very pretty soup. Yeah, it is, okay? isn't it? So we're going uh, from there. Next would be the onion. And the onion's a little different, okay? Get ready. Don't we it. have any of those crazy onion glasses or anything that they've been <laughs> well, selling? So when you thing. chop onions. If, if, if it makes you cry, the best Here we thing go. to do is to You're stay away from it. You're going to get to know me better now. Stay away from it. You know, it's just walk away if you see yourself crying. Don't, don't brush your face. Okay? You know what I do? I run them under cold water, let them soak in cold water or ice water before I chop them. I think that Actually, seems to ice, help a little bit. Ice does help a bit. What happens uh -huh. is there's some, there's some, um, the liquid in the onion mm -hmm. gets released. And what I do is I always remove the outer skin of the onion, mm -hmm. okay? Like so, because there's a lot of dirt on that. And I generally don't use that for anything, mm -hmm. okay? And if you notice, I left that end of the onion on. Why? And the reason I left that on is I'm gonna dice this onion. And if I take that end of the onion off, it will- uh, Oh, separate onion. It'll separate and it'll, you know, it'll be harder to dice, okay? okay? So we're gonna put this stuff over here. Oh, good point. You know, so we leave that on, okay? And what we do is we're going to make some cuts into the onion. Now you make that look very easy. Like so, keeping your fingers on the top of the onion, okay? And depending how, how uh, small I want them to dice will depend how many of these cuts I make. Yes. And if you notice, I didn't go all the way through the onion. Right. I, I went almost through it, okay? Like so. Yeah, see, I've done that, but I didn't know to go the other way as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a good secret. And then, good and then we start here, and you notice... Now you notice this time, Kathy, I have my knife off the board. Because it's very hard with an onion being so round, it's right. hard to get up there, okay? That looks great. Okay, like so, and we go to the end there, like so. You can't really see it, but it really is totally uniform. That's great. And we're gonna stir our, stir our stuff here mm -hmm. so we don't create any stir color. Stir our stuff, we're stir down our stuff. stuff now. Okay, and now <laughs> we're gonna cut into this onion again the same way. Mm -hmm. And I like to use a Vidalia onion this time of yeah, when, when I can. They're really a sweet mm -hmm. onion. They're the best. And whenever I can get them, you can't get them year round, but whenever mm -hmm. I can get them, I like to use them. And then we'll take our, another, our tool again. Like so. Okay. And we'll put our onions into our pot. Do you want me to give that a stir while you sure. chop the next? I'll switch places with you. Oh, okay. You All can right. give that a stir. Here we go. There we go. Okay, now. <laughs> you notice how closely he was watching me. <laughs> <laughs> now, the potatoes. Surprised you on that onion thing, didn't I? The potatoes. Potatoes mm -hmm. are a, a little different, a little harder, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and they're kind of round. See, they kind of like want to move around on mm -hmm. us, okay? Uh, so what I tell the students, and when I tell anyone I'm tr trying to teach anything, I square it off on the bottom. But that means I cut a piece off so now it, it doesn't sits. rock and roll anywhere. Okay. Now I'm going to cut long slices from this potato, and again, I'm going to cut this into sticks, mm -hmm. the same way I did before. I'm going to come over here so I can see you a little better. Okay. Sure. So I'm cutting these little mm -hmm. sticks, and then as I get them like that. All right, let's go, Speedy. Now we're going to cut them as uniformly as we okay. can, okay? So as you see, you know, we got through these potatoes. They're a little like so. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do, we don't need these quite yet. Okay. So uh, can you just uh, bring that bowl up here, Kathy, sure. if you could? We're going to turn this off for a second. Okay. So they're going to go back in the water? Yeah, these are going to so. go back in the water. And you, that's one thing you want to do. Uh, if you're working with potatoes, you always want to put them uh -huh. uh, where, where they're hydrated because if you don't, they start to turn brown. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in making this white complected soup, they, uh, they don't look as good as they should have, okay? Mm -hmm. Like so, so our potatoes are now ready to go. And just okay. pour that whole thing. We're, gonna, we're using about 64 mm. ounces. Just pour that whole thing in there. And we can give that a stir. Great. And we're gonna pour maybe about half of that in there. Reason being, as we cook this, it's going to, uh, it's gonna some of it's gonna evaporate. And so you, you made this broth on your own? I did. And how did you go about doing that? Just quickly. All uh, bones, celery, onions, okay. carrots, bring them up to a simmer. Enough? That's good. Yeah, you can okay. put that over there by the corn. Sure. And one other thing, Kathy, there's some chicken there. Yes, I saw that. Now, there you go. this is the kind of chicken I like to use. Um, I'm take, take those tongs there. Mm -hmm. um, now, you'll see, I like to use chicken on the bone. 
okay? Uh, this is a half of a chicken, okay, that I have skinned because I don't want all that fat in the soup because you only have to ladle it out later right. anyway. And I okay? think you lose some, you lose your flavors, your seasonings when you do that, don't you? Is that, when you, you take do. the fat off? Yeah, when you're ladling and skimming off the top I, I of the I believe fat. you do. I believe you do. And, you know, there is some flavor in that fat, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have to really do some work later right. to get that off anyway. So I take the fat off, okay? Now, I use half chicken. I like the chicken on the bone to make soup better because uh -huh. I think it has a lot more flavor. Could you use just white meat, boneless, skinless? You could. Right. It, it works. But I just don't think it's as good, okay? Now, once I put my... Once I put my chicken in there, okay, we're going to put the lid on the pot and we want to, we want to let that come up to a simmer and we want to let that simmer about 40 minutes or so okay. before, before it would be done. Okay. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we'll move along with the process. We're going to learn how to make a roux. We'll see you in just a moment. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. We are back and Chef Dave is about to show us how to make a roux to thicken his corn chowder. Okay, Kathy, the first thing we're gonna do is I think that the chicken's just about ready. Um, after simmering in there about, maybe about 40 minutes depending on how thick the chicken was. Okay, so we're gonna remove that and we're gonna let that cool down. So you don't have to leave the chicken in there any longer than that until it's falling off the bone or any of those things some people no, because, talk about? No, because I like to be able to bite the chicken. You know, okay. I, I don't think it should be shredded by any means, okay? okay? So to make a roux, that's how we're gonna thicken this soup. This is a cream-based soup. So we're gonna start with some butter. Okay. That's some butter. Yeah, that's some butter, all right. Okay. <laughs> that's some butter. Or you could use other fats. If you like, you know, yeah. could you just put that under this, Kathy? Sure. If you wanted to use um, margarine instead for a cost savings, or if, you know, if there's other fats you wanted to use, you could use oil if you wanted to. But I've had the best, I've had the best luck making, uh, making roux with butter, okay? So it's equal parts of this butter and flour. So depending upon what you use, it's going to change the consistency of the roux too, See, isn't it? Yes, it, it definitely will. And, and the color of the roux matters too. Uh, we're making a blonde type soup today, <laughs> so we're not going to cook. We're not going to cook the flour too much. We're going to okay. cook it just briefly, just to get rid of the pasty taste. Okay? Can you add some of that flour in here, Kathy? Oh, sure. Right over the pot of soup. There we go. Careful. A little bit more. Okay. And it should be equal parts by weight. Okay. But when, you're, when you've been doing this for a while, you can kind of go just kind of like how it looks, okay? A little bit more there, And Kathy. you really have to keep moving with this, correct? I think you do, and I think that'll probably do it, okay. okay? And it forms this paste that we use in the food service industry for thickening things, okay? And that's about the correct consistency. And then we cook it maybe, maybe another minute or so just to get rid of that floury taste. Okay? And this is something you can do in advance. And if, when you get to make brown gravies, uh, you would want to cook this until it actually turns brown. And it gets a really nutty, beautiful oh, taste okay. to it as well. Okay? Okay? But I'm not going to cook that anymore. Okay? Then what we do is we're going to whisk this into the All pot. Right. So like you so. do this in small pieces at a time on the whisk. Right. We right. Uh, maybe like a third at a time, and then you just you just watch. And I'm doing this at a pretty high heat. Uh, so the idea is to get that to um, break apart the liquid. Yeah, that's in the why soup. I'm using it's a whisk. It really looks nice. You should see what's happening. Do you see what's happening yeah. in the pot now? Mm -hmm. It's getting thick. And if I put that in there all at one time, it wouldn't incorporate very well. Okay. Okay. So I'm. The color looks really nice. You see yeah. how it's changing? It changes the texture. <laughs> and I think that that's the consistency we're looking for, okay, Kathy. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay, it's, it's not really that thick, is it? I mean, no, it's, it's not. It's on the thinner side of thick. Now, if you could do me two favors, Kathy, you just uh, hand me those potatoes there mm -hmm. and we'll finish this up in okay. that little metal bowl. Sure. Now, what we would do is we would add our potatoes. We have to get, get rid of the water first, mm -hmm. like so. You just remove that. Mm -hmm. And then we can let that simmer about another, just until the potatoes are tender. And could I also have that corn? Sure. 
Yeah, that would be a good thing in a chicken corn, corn chowder. chowder. <laughs> you need corn, right? Okay. That's very helpful. Okay. <laughs> Got it. I'm gonna and then at yeah. the very end, could I have that cream, cream over there, please? At the very end, uh, I have about 10 or 12 ounces, eight, 8 to 12 ounces. I don't measure things very, very uh, uh, appropriately, but we're just going to add that in there. And I've warmed that up first, the thing called tempering. And the reason you want to do that is you want to bring it closer to the temperature of the soup uh, so it doesn't curdle. Now that's okay? heavy cream too, correct? It is heavy cream. And if you, if you wanted to uh, cut the calories down a little bit, you could use milk. You could use whole milk. You could use super skim milk if you wanted to. So that, that really doesn't then have a whole lot to do with the thickening of the soup. So it doesn't matter what you use. Well, it does matter it does. from a taste standpoint. Okay. From a chef's standpoint, you would only want to use heavy <laughs> cream because it tastes so good. Uh, but from a health standpoint, you could get away with using skim milk okay. or whole milk. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then with the exception of the chicken in here, Kathy, this soup is pretty much done. We want to let that chicken mm -hmm. cool down. Then I would tear the meat off the bones, chop it up, and I would add that at the very last minute. And is it going to thicken a little bit more than it will as because it cooks? because the potatoes in there. You see the oh, potatoes? Yeah, the they haven't started to cook yet, and there's mm -hmm. some starch in those potatoes, which will help that cooking. Up, you know, thicken up a little bit more. Okay. I can't wait to see the finished product. That looks so good. And we will do that right after this. See you in a moment. Make it happen at Luzerne County Community College. We are back and our corn chowder is finally finished. It's been on the stove probably for about an hour. And Dave says that that really all depends on the temperature of your range at home. So don't go by exactly what temperature you see here and the, the length of cooking. Right, when the, when the soup is thick enough, the chicken mm -hmm. is completely cooked, all that kind of stuff, then the soup is done. Okay. okay? And we're gonna open it up here, okay? You can see now those that potatoes. Those potatoes have thickened up mm -hmm. our soup, uh, you know, an awful lot. So you, now you can see. It you can really see. Look at all the good. colors, all the nice colors and that kind of thing. You see the chunks of chicken. Mm -hmm. You asked me before about leaving the chicken fall off the bone. Mm -hmm. Then it gets shredded looking. You can see the chunks of chicken in here. Yeah, okay? it looks delicious. Okay, so if we put this into a bowl here, it's really pretty too. Like so. Besides Thank you. Looking like it tastes good. It just looks good. Right. It's a hearty yeah. soup. And like I said, this, this recipe would probably feed eight, eight to ten mm -hmm. people, so it's economical as well, okay? And you would serve a little bread with this. Yeah, a nice loaf of crusty bread. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I would probably want something colorful on the top, so I have some chopped scallions here. We would put some chopped scallions nice. on the top. Or maybe if you had some um, sliced, sliced French bread that was toasted off. <laughs> Creamy. Taste the chicken. I can taste the bacon. It's very, mm. very, uh, very flavorful. Very hearty. Salt, pepper. I don't think it really needs anything. I always keep those for last. But mm -hmm. I think in this case, I think it's seasoned just right. So I don't think I'd change anything. I think it's fine just the way it is. <laughs> Terrific. Spot on. Once right. again. Right. Here at Cooking Classic. So thank you very much, and thank you, Chef Dave. You're welcome. And we'll see you next time on Cooking Classic.